Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So we're uh, deep into our, our section on SQL Script, and already we've seen the three traditional forms of usage of SQL Script, being uh, a standard stored procedure, a table function, and a scalar function. But now I want to show you one of the uh, new usages of SQL Script that was introduced in HANA 2.0 SPS03, which is the concept of libraries. Now libraries is just, um, to me, it's, it's just a bit of an evolution, a natural evolution of the usage of SQL Script. Um, a library allows you to pull together multiple um, stored procedures together into a single library and have some um, some variables that can be shared between these functions. When I look at it, and this is my personal opinion, I, I begin to see almost like a um, an object-oriented class kind of thing going on here. As you see, we can have public and, and private parts. And I think as this library concept evolves even more over uh, future releases, as we continue to invest more in it, uh, you'll, you'll see it kind of go along that path. And, and it just brings in you know, additional capabilities that we're used to in other programming languages, a reusability, uh, an ease of reusability uh, for, for SQL script, and, uh, you know, the ability to go beyond what we can do with just uh, procedures and functions alone. So let's, uh, let's see how this, uh, we'll go back over to our project, and um, we'll go ahead and create a separate folder for all of our libraries to keep things nicely organized. So I'll just create a new folder here. We'll call this libraries. And uh, then you'll see when I say new and database artifact, and we'll give it a name, master data. And you see HDB library, a new file extension, a whole new type of development artifact. You know, even though we're using the SQL script syntax, just like uh, functions uh, and and procedures have two different uh, development artifacts, library is a is a third development artifact that we have here. And uh, we can go ahead and grab the code snippet. Uh, let's just put it in here. And we'll have a look at the code. Now, one thing you'll notice is right now in SPS03, uh, the editor here doesn't, um, uh, the HDB library editor, unfortunately, doesn't know that it's SQL script. It isn't doing the syntax highlighting like the uh, sort procedure or the, uh, uh, the function editor does that's something we'll we'll hopefully get cleared up here in the uh, in the near future, uh, but it is SQL script. The syntax is, is essentially the the same, you know, at least from from the basics. Uh, but what what you see here is the ability to declare variables publicly uh, that are not part of any one of the functions or procedures that that are within this library. Um, but then you also see here we have a uh, a, a function, um, a scalar function being declared in line, and notice it's a public function. Then we have a, a procedure here. We actually have two procedures, so we can we can take related functions and procedures and, and put them together in in this one library that logically groups them together. We have the concept of public and private. We're not we're, we're not really utilizing that here in this particular example. We're creating three public. Um, and three public actions that can be performed on this library, uh, but we can have variables that exist outside of an individual function. That's something that uh, is is really a, a totally new concept uh, to a SQL script. There was no good way of of doing that before, short of you know like creating a, something in the session context or a temporary table or something like that. But uh, but now uh, we bring that into the programming language itself. Okay, um, so. Uh, very similar functionality to what we've already developed in separate functions. You, uh, the employee exists. That that's some new functionality. We're just checking uh, for a particular employee ID whether it's found in the database and returning true or false. Uh, you also see here the the use of the true boolean. Uh, that's some some newish syntax as well. Uh, we haven't always had the true boolean in SQL script processing. Uh, that's not specific to the library, but just uh, just pointing out that example. 
Um, then we have where we can load the employee data. And we're just going to select uh, the employees and, and return the, uh, uh, the content there. Um, and we have uh, get business partner data. So for a particular business partner, we can return its data as well. So, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, now, uh, what we want to do in order to access this library, we're going to, uh, to create uh, a procedure. That is one of the, the limitations right now is how you can access the library. You know, there isn't syntax directly from, from SQL yet, so we kind of need a procedure wrapper for now. It's all things that, you know, we plan to improve in the future as well. Uh, so we'll come here and we'll just create a new stored procedure. We'll call it get master data. And I'll go ahead and grab the template for this. And you can see how this stored procedure will. Um, uh, be able to access the library. That's this new syntax here using master data as MD data. So we're saying what library we want to utilize and then giving it a, a local variable to, um, to reference it here. And then uh, the syntax to call the functions or, or procedures within the library is basically the uh, library variable name and a single colon. That's what we have right here, a single colon. And, and then the rest of it is, is a pretty normal call. You know, here we see the function uh, being called. Here we see the, uh, the two procedures being called. Um, so nice, nice little example. Fortunately, once again, a call back to earlier where we said the uh, client-side syntax check inside the stored procedure is not very smart. Earlier, we saw how it doesn't really know how to resolve the table name references very well, but it also doesn't know this newer syntax. Like, it doesn't know what this using or the single colon is. Once again, unfortunate. It, it, it's, um, it's something we just have to deal with, and it means basically ignoring all these error markers here, um, at least for the time being. Okay, um, so we've got our completed stored procedure so that we can test this. Let's go ahead uh, and build our module. So we get a runtime version of this to test with. Here we are, it's done. And we can go back over to the database explorer. Let's close these two. And if we look in our container, we see there is a library section in the container. And if I come here, I, I see the library. Um, it uh, will load the definition, shows us some of the metadata about it. It's a nice first step. You know, we at least have visibility to the runtime libraries. We just can't we can't test them from here yet. Uh, can't execute them via SQL or from the SQL console. Um, so yeah, baby steps. Um, but what we can do is we can take our store procedure wrapper and uh, the get master data, and we'll generate a call statement for that. And what we see here, no, no input parameters, just output parameters. So nothing we need to do here. So we can just go ahead and call it. And there we see the output. Because we have multiple outputs, I don't think we've seen an example yet with multiple outputs. When you test um, any procedure with multiple outputs, the database explorer just lists them here. You know, results one, results two, results three, and then messages uh, is, is any of the messages that come back out. Um, so here is the first table, the, uh, the employees data. Okay, so it takes the table parameters and lists them in order. And then we see the business partner data, right? The third result is actually a, uh, a grouping of all the scalar values. So this isn't necessarily coming out in the same order that we list them here um, because the database explorer is always going to list uh, table returns first. And then it's going to group all of the scalar values together in one results tab. And that's what we're seeing here that, yes, uh, let's see, employee exists, false, uh, employee count 33, uh, business partner count 45. Okay, what we would uh, expect to, to see there. All right, um, so that uh, wraps up our topic on um, 
creating our own libraries. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some of the SAP standard built-in libraries because increasingly we are also using this technology to wrap up and deliver uh, functionality that in the past we would have had to build, uh, create a, as built-in um, procedures or functions that uh, would have been implemented in the C layer in HANA, but now we can deliver them more easily and faster to you as reusable SQL script libraries.